I don't understand. I don't understand this one. This whole alpha side of the bracket has a huge advantage. I don't think anyone's happy about this first round. G'day team, I woke up this morning to find out this video had dropped the VCT lock in Brazil format has been explained. So I thought we could just run through this video and I can break down the information here for you and look at some of the interesting decisions being made. I'm Tichinha, shoutcaster in VCT Brazil, and welcome to Lock King, the first global event of the new Valorant Champions Tour. Yeah! Over the next three weeks, 32 teams will... Here's the big thing. These two teams here, EDG and FPX, are the two Chinese teams that just won the most recent Chinese event, the FDG Invitational. You might recognize EDG from Champions last year and FPX, don't get confused. It is the same organization, but it's a completely different team from the EMEA team, the Masters winners that are now four of the five members are on the Na'Vi team. This is a completely different roster from China. What I do think is interesting is that the lock-in tournament was originally announced to be all 30 teams of the partnership league. So you had NA, EMEA, and Pacific. But I do wonder if they thought this was always going to happen. And 32 gives them a nice square number for creating a bracket. So I do wonder if they knew the Chinese teams were always going to join or if they had a different format for the 30-team bracket. If you're new to competitive Valorant and VCT for 2023, there's three partnered leagues that Riot are running. So this is the America's League, these teams here. This second lot of 10 teams is AMEA, which is Europe Plus. And then these teams here are the Pacific teams. And then these two are the extra China teams. And this is a new thing for 2023. And Riot is running this tournament with all of the international partnered teams to kick off the year, this Brazil lock-in tournament. I've been pretty hyped for this to start for a while and it's less than a month away now. Valorant Esports History. Every team from the Americas, Pacific and EMEA leagues will be in attendance, as well as two representatives from China. To secure victory, teams will have to battle through a gauntlet of matches where there will be no room for error. The concept is brutally simple. A single elimination bracket all the way to the top. Teams will be drawn and... So this is the big thing here. Single elimination bracket. When you've got 32 teams, I think running anything more complex than a single elimination bracket is gonna be way too crazy and way too drawn out. The event is already running for like three weeks anyway, but... This is brutal. 16 teams, half of the teams here are only going to play one match, potentially only two maps, and go home. That's bonkers. And place it into two groups that will build each side of the 32 team bracket. It's best of three up into the final four and best of five to close. I do like that we get uh, best of five in the semis and the grand final as well. I think that's really, really cool. It was on the tournament. Some of these clips are insane. That's it. You're not going to want to miss a match. So that's it. And they have released the seeding already. So let's have a look at that. So this is the bracket. I know it looks a little weird, but it's just... A bracket turned into circles because because marketing. We have the alpha winner this is kind of like alpha earth and the omega winner is like omega earth in the lore if you know about the two earths. That's a whole like lore behind Valorant. Go check it out. Super interesting. I really like the lore. But here is the downside and the problem with the single elimination. I'm not against single elimination in general. I know that some people are. Single elim makes it so every match has weight. You know, every match is knocking someone out. So the stakes are raised. But when there's no seeding, i.e. when literally almost every single one of these 32 rosters is brand new or dramatically changed from last year, it means that we have no idea who's good. Which when they announced this tournament, part of the whole idea of doing it is so that you can see how the different regions stack up against each other. So you don't actually get a really good measure of who is good. You might just have a bad match or a bad matchup. And so you could be the second best team at the tournament and get knocked out first round because there's no proper seeding. No real way to actually do proper seeding either. So like, for example, we have Paper Rex versus Cloud9 first round. And then second round, they versus DRX, who's versing BBL. This is 
like such a stacked portion of this one bracket alone. You look at all of the other sides of the bracket and you could split these three teams into the other three parts of the bracket. It would feel so much more even. But just because it's, I think it's a random draw, you have two rosters from PaperX and DRX that have competed throughout 2022. These are the two best established rosters. Stayed the same from 2022 to 2023. And they're in the same quarter of the same half of the bracket. And then they also have Cloud9, which is another team that people are really, really excited about. So we only get to see one match of either PaperX or Cloud9, and then two matches of two of these three teams at most. And then on the other side of the bracket, you have the same problem as well with potentially the best, best EMEA week. team, Fnatic, versus potentially the best America's team, Sentinels, in the first round as well. So we literally only get to see maximum three maps of one of these teams. I'm a big fan of the single elimination bracket, especially with this many teams, but without the seeding, it just feels like there's going to be some disappointment in some of the matches overall. I don't know. Potentially, there's not a better way of doing it and random seeding's fair for everybody. And there's always the argument that the best team's going to win anyway. But in terms of match quality throughout the rounds, there's definitely room for improvement. But yeah, I think this is a big... I don't think anyone's happy about this first round. Only getting to see one map of Fnatic or Sentinels. Just as a fan of the game, you want to see more maps from both of these teams. And the final strange decision is if you look at the dates of all these times, 14th, 14th, 15th, 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 16th, 16th. So this whole alpha part of the bracket is being played in the... Then we have the next games, which are on the next weekend, 23rd to 25th. And then we have the playoff brackets the week after 3rd, 4th and 5th of March. So this whole alpha side of the bracket has a huge advantage in being able to play their games and then they get a week off to watch these games and anti-strat their opponents for the semis. <laughs> like, uh, I don't understand. I don't understand this one. The 32, the 32 single Lelium I can understand, but this, this is a huge advantage for that whole alpha half of the bracket. I don't get it. I don't get it. Anyways, that's that's it. That's all that there is to cover for today. Uh, I'll be back tomorrow with another analysis video, the one that was planned for today, but this came out, so I had to deal with it. <laughs> but these details came out, so this is today's video. Let me know what you think about the decisions in the comments. I'm curious to see what everyone's reactions are.